Okay, we're off we go to get our second class medical. Going to take beautiful Elvira today. It's been a beautiful summer, end of summer day. I thought we'd go for a little drive. And this is my beautiful good luck charm motorcycle. Well, there's always a bump in the road. Gotta to tow my bike and I gotta get on the next ferry in order to get to this doctor to get my second class medical. Wish me luck. Uh -oh. <laughs> well you guys, looks like I made the boat after all, at the nick of time. Uh, unfortunately my bike sprung a leak. I had to, as you saw from the video, I had to tow it to the mainland again to get it fixed. Anyways, here is Whitby Island. It's a beautiful low tide today. Uh, it's the end of summer. It's been a really nice summer here. Beautiful weather. This is uh, Columbia Beach. Hey you guys, I'm on my way back to Whidbey Island and guess what, I got my second class medical back. Here it is man, I'm very very happy. After a long morning of having to tow my motorcycle because of the leaking oil and uh, trying to rush the ferry, I was able to get to my appointment in time, had a really good physical, checked my eyes, blood pressure, a lot of other things and uh, I'm deemed healthy enough at 65, going on to 66 to continue to fly planes. So second class medical, very happy about that huge obstacle uh, achieved today and I hope that you guys will be doing the same thing for your medical too. What Another thing I wanted to show you guys also uh, in addition to you know getting yourself a flight school like we talked about a few weeks ago and getting your your medical application filled out another thing to do if you already have a pilot's license especially if you got one back in the 80s and 90s take a look at it make sure that your social security number is not on it if it is then you can mail your your pilot's license or fill out an application for a number change for your certificate number like I did with mine and they give you a brand new issued uh, certificate and uh, pilot's license. It's free of charge. Contact the FAA. Uh, highly recommend you do that because now with identity theft pretty prevalent and people trying to steal people's identity you don't want to have your social security number floating around on your pilot's license if you, especially when you start renting airplanes at different locations you just have to be very safe and, and be precautionary because you never know in this day and age uh, this type of stuff can happen. Well, I'm away back from uh, the doctor's office with my second class medical. I'm here at Payne Field. Um, this is where I'll be taking my flight training to get myself burned again after I do numerous hours on our new flight simulator yoke that I just got this afternoon. I will show you guys here in a few minutes. But here's Payne Field. Just for those for those of you that don't know, that is the Everett plant. That is the largest building by volume in the world. And that is where I worked for 13 years as a quality manager. Those airplanes out there in front are triple seven X's. That is the new flagship for Boeing. And that's where they built the 747, 767, 777, and now they'll be building the 737 MAX there in the front uh, front part now that the 747 is canceled. Those two buildings over there, actually three buildings, are the paint hangers. I used to manage those as the paint manager for quality. And those airplanes out there were just painted. And that is the Everett flight line. That's where I worked also as a delivery manager, and that's where all the customers go to to test their planes before they they take ownership and we give them the keys. They fly to areas far away in the world. Yeah, Paint Field is uh, very very famous. Uh, it's a great little airport, and uh, look in the distance over there, you'll see more 777 X's parked. 
It's a really, really busy little place. Got a lot of airplanes here, a lot of airplanes to deliver. Those are the 787s. And on the other side over there are the legacy airplanes, which are the triple sevens. So I thought it'd be appropriate for me to film this the day that I got my second class medical and uh, continue my journey to hopefully fly and uh, get into the right seat of some sort of turboprop, maybe even a small jet, I don't know. Got the commercial license, got the multi-year rating, got the instrument rating, got the seaplane rating. I just need to get current again, you guys. All right, so here is the new flight yoke system that I just bought, and I got it through Dell, the computer company Dell. It is the flight yoke system made by a company called Logitech, and it is the professional yoke and throttle quadrant simulation controller that is was highly recommended on Amazon and by users online. It, uh, it has the actual controller here, and of course the actual yoke here and I'll show you how to set it up or actually I'll show you where I set it up here in a minute so I got my yoke now my beautiful Logitech yoke system set up here in a little little guest room that we have in our house that's not really being used right now um, so it's set up it's just a simple HP pavilion laptop that I use this is actually my real estate computer that I'm not using right now and now I've set it up with my Logitech flight simulator, which is really easy to set up. There's a lot of tutorials on YouTube that you can find that will help you uh, set this thing up and program it properly for your own, you know, press, um, for your own needs and such. And I'll send the link down below. But right now, this is how I set it up. I got a little iPad over here to put four flight in there, and then of course I got the actual simulator up here on flights, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so we'll do some little demoing here in a few minutes. But I just want to show you, you don't have to be elaborate. You know, I don't have rudder pedals. If you notice on the bottom, I don't have rudder pedals. So I'm steering with the actual yoke itself. And I'll show you exactly how it gets auto-populated, uh, or actually how it gets installed directly from the company here in a few minutes. So right out of the box, this is Logitech uh, Flight Simulator a yoke and throttle quadrant automatically has a default. The company, when you buy this, it automatically connects it to certain things that you want them to, you know, that you're going to need to be able to use. For example, the axis on the ailerons, if you look at the simulator here on, on the computer, it turns also. So that automatically is connected. You don't have to sit there and, and pre-connect it yourself. And the same thing with the pitch control here. You notice how the wheel goes back and forth on the on the actual screen. And then also here, the throttle control works. The prop control, if you had one, which of course on the Cessna 152 and the Cessna 172, you don't have the, the, the uh, variable pitch prop. But then here you have the mixture control that works automatically. And what's really great about this, if you look over here, this little hat, this point of view hat switch, if you turn it to the left, you'll be able to see the left side of the plane. And if you turn it to the right, you see the right side of the plane. And if you turn it forward, you see closer up, you know, on the actual console itself. So it is really great. Some things have already been integrated into it. Uh, thing that I did have to, you know, con connect earlier later on actually later on was the actual flap setting which is right over here but for the sake of you know operating in a in the environment that we're doing right now with taxiing taking off and landing you really just need aileron control pitch control you need to be able to turn the parking brake on and off which is right over here and of course you need to see left and you need to see right especially when you're doing a downwind landing and to base leg and such. So I'm getting ahead of myself right now. It's, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube that will show you exactly how to install the Logitech uh, flight simulator to your computer. But again, my setup is relatively simple. It's my HP Pavilion touchscreen laptop that I have for real estate that, that I'm now using for this. I got this new wheel and it works way better than the old one. The old one was way too overcorrecting and too squirrely. And this one's not. It works really wonderful. And you can set it up for different sen sensitivities as well for whatever you know makes you more comfortable. Okay, so let's practice a little taxing here in a few minutes. 
The FAA has a really good website and a channel call from the flight deck and they have all sorts of different airports across the country that has difficult areas of entrance and departure and they also have uh, like for example here phraseology because over the last 20 years some of the phraseology in aviation has changed uh, and markings a lot of things have changed so here is a great website that I think you should look at um, it's from the FAA but it's also on YouTube it's called from the flight deck and here's for example Van Nuys Airport here's an airport they're all over the country Chicago Executive Airport these are airports Napa County in San Francisco area these are airports that have uh, had challenging uh, approaches and such and taxiways and it's hard to navigate through and there's a lot of traffic definitely a website to check into to kind of brush up on just the basics of taxiing and being able to talk to ground control before we even leave the ground so before we even taxi you know you, there's a few steps that we have to remember right before you start to move the airplane you got to get the ATIS the airport terminal information service and first and to know what runways are being used and what's the information that's relevant for that period of time. If remember, ATIS is updated every single hour. And the weather changes every hour and things change at the airport itself every hour. And then you need to have really good situational awareness. Where are you? This is where the, you know, looking around the airplane. This is after you've done, your, of course, your walk around and such. You've done that. You check the outside, the exterior of the plane. But where are you located at? Are you are there people involved? There's are other airplanes close by. Because when you start the airplane up, are you going to be blowing rocks onto people? And is there someone in front of the propeller that you you know that may be hurt if you turn the engine on? So you've got to look really know what your location is. And then before you actually taxi, you got to contact ground frequency and get the clearance to taxi. I mean, who are you, right? So Cessna November one one two three Echo Sierra, where are you? My where I'm looking at the ABC hangar here at Painfield. What's your intention? The intention is I want to taxi to 3-4 left with India. Of course, India is now the ATIS information for that particular time. It could be anything. Bravo, Charlie, Delta, it could be anything. But you need to kind of give the ground that information that you are now current with the ATIS that's happening at that particular moment in time. And then before moving, know the direction of the wind and use proper aileron control. Because remember, when the wind comes from a certain direction, you know, you need to have proper aileron control to kind of keep the wings from rising or, you know, lowering. And you want to make sure that you're using that proper technique because wings are essentially sails and they act in accordance where the wind direction is coming from. But a lot of people don't do this when they taxi. They think it's just, you know, just leave the yoke stationary and just, just steer to your location. But in all actuality, you really need to keep track of... The wind direction, especially if there's a strong, you know, crosswind ha wind ha wind happening that day, where you want to make sure that you you stay have proper aileron control when you're taxiing. And then when you're taxiing itself, you know, you add power. You don't sit there and use a lot of brakes. You don't ride the brakes. You know, when you're taxiing too fast, you you immediately your impulse is to stand on the brakes and slow it down that way. Use proper power control. And never taxi faster than you can walk. If you walk fast, that's a month, that's a speed of taxiing that you really need to use when you're taxiing on the uh, on the taxiway. And then of course, keep the wheel, the nose wheel, centered on the center line, and then stay alert with your surroundings. Again, adjust your taxi speed with power and not brakes. Okay, so let's practice taxiing a little bit. Remember, you know, don't ride the brakes. Just use little power inputs to control your speed and stay on the, uh, the yellow taxi line here and let's practice taxing. Okay, November 213 Echo Sierra is taxing to 34 left. All right, a little bit of power. The airplane moving. There we go. Power back. Stay on the center line. So, you know, again, I don't have any rudder pedals. I'm using the yoke to steer. And uh, just just little incremental steering. Pretend that you're a large airliner, right? You know, you don't need to taxi too fast. Pretend you're a large airliner. Large airliners never taxi fast more than five miles per hour. Stay on the center line. Now test the brakes. 
Press the brakes, make sure it stops. And there we go. Good. Brakes checked. And I continue to Taxi to the next exit, then come to a stop. Remember to control your speed with throttle and brakes. See the crossing in front of us? Stop before it as if traffic was coming off the runway. Little throttle inputs. Staying on the center line. Slow taxiing, there's no hurry. Keep a hip, keep your eyes out on the surroundings for other airplanes, people, trucks. Just taxi at a nice moderate pace. Stay on the center line. There's going to be a lot of activity, ATC, ground control will be talking to other people, so there's a lot going on here. Make sure that your wingtip doesn't tip, you know, hit something from another airplane that's parked or a vehicle or some kind. You know, give a little bit of power. Again, don't hold, don't ride the brakes. I'm not standing on the brakes at all, just taxing with power control. And practice this, you know, just practice this. This is the thing before we take off, let's just keep practicing, get a little really good at taxiing. Because no matter what airport you go to, they're all going to be different, right? They're all going to be different. I'm going to just stop here for a second. Stop here for a second. Uh, all airports are going to be different. You're going to need to know the diagrams, you need the locations, all the different taxiways, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, all these different uh, locations where you need to turn left and right, different runway locations. So it's very important. Pretend that the airport is a small city and you're navigating through different streets with your car. But now you're just using an airplane and you're doing the same thing. You've got to know where your location is. And again, you know, compensate for the wind. I'm not turning my yoke right now because my steering is affected. So you can see here, it even gives a depiction of all the different airports and their, their actual map. All the taxiways, the runways, the fire stations, the different locations of the hangars and such. It's an unbelievable resource for all of us that are getting back into flying to find the airport that you want. For example, for me, it would be Payne Field here in Washington, also called Snohomish Airport and know exactly where, once I land, where do I go? Key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Check to the right to see if a vehicle is on the runway, and to the left to make sure no other planes are approaching. Everything looks good, no cross traffic, Go ahead and taxi into position. Now slowly taxi onto the runway and align the plane with the center line. Then stop your plane just after the number 21. Let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Good. Now gently pull back on the yoke. And we're airborne. Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple of inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 knots and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time.
gentle maneuvering, very gentle little turns, keep it, uh, back pressure on there, trim if needed, and at 5,500 feet, slowly lower the nose down. Okay, 5,500 feet, you've reached your target altitude. And there we go, take Good off. Good job. So as you see here, I got a B, so the the goal is to get an A, so I could have kept my, my uh, airplane on the center line a little bit better. Uh, but I mean, maintained my 70 knots, I maintained my pitch attitude and my heading, and I ended up at 5,500 feet, safe and sound. So again, takeoffs is uh, something we have to practice over and over and over again, and I'm going to do the same thing. So keep practicing it until you get a very, very proficient at it, and then, believe it or not, the real airplane, you guys, will be way easier to fly than this. Um, I can guarantee you that, because you're just much more aware of so many different things. But the simulator will make you a better pilot because it's a little bit more demanding. Okay, next thing we're going to do is going to do a fast landing. For this landing exercise, I want you to focus on the yoke only. We're close enough to the runway to land safely without adding any throttle. Maintain a speed of around 65 knots. Pitch down if you're going too slow. Pitch up if you're too fast. speed at 65 knots. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. To flare means to raise the nose of the aircraft to slow your descent for a softer landing, but without ever leveling off or climbing. The main landing gear will touch down before the nose wheel does. We're coming up on flare height. Resist the temptation to pull back. Now focus on the end of the runway and pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Excellent. Okay, so that was a landing. Uh, I did a couple landings, and you notice how I, the first one I got a B, I was a little bit off, but I continued to practice. Then I got the A here. So it's out of out of score of ten thousand, I got an eight thousand thirty-two. So it requires practice. You know, the taxiing, the takeoffs, and the landings require practice. So before we do pattern flying, which will be on the next video that I do. Um, let's keep practicing with this. I'm going to be doing the same thing too. And as we move on from part two to part three to part four to part five, we'll gradually get a little bit more in more complicated uh, scenarios. Right now, this is a lot to do to tackle the taxiing and uh, you know and experiment with different airports and use the uh, FA you know website that I told you guys about the um, the flight from the flight deck and uh, you know go to different airports. So Microsoft Flight Simulator has thousands of airports you can go into. You go to Payne Field, you go to San Francisco International, go to different airports near where you're located at and and then practice taxiing at those airports, you know, those runways, uh, taking off and landing. That's what I'm going to be doing too. I'll be practicing here at Payne Field. So on the next till the next video when we start doing pattern flying, practice taxiing, practice communication, remember your your uh, your situational awareness. Uh, taking off, keep it nice and stabilized, uh, climb out, you know, uh, maintain certain speeds and level off when, when you're supposed to level off. And on landing, stabilized approach all the way down, you know, uh, stay on the center line and try to keep your airplane nice and straight and look down the runway when you hit the touchdown zone. So I hope this video was interesting for you guys. I love doing this. I'm having so much fun uh, getting back into flying with you guys. Get your flight medical back, and uh, let's get back into a real airplane really soon. But in the meantime, we'll keep practicing on this thing. And thanks again for watching Realty Rides, you guys. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you guys really soon on the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you, and enjoy your flight.